In this video, I'm going to share with you eight things to do eight weeks leading up to your explant surgery. Hey, my name's Christina and I'm the admin of Breast Implant Illness, Rejuvenation and Education and the founder of Size Happy. The intention behind today's video is to help you walk into your explant surgery as calm as can be and also helping you get as strong as you can be both physically and emotionally. Now the first thing that I think goes without having to say too much is getting your gut and your immune system as strong and as healthy as can be before your explant because while you're waiting to explant that is the time that you really want to focus on those two things for your surgery. So three things that you can do is take a really good pre and probiotic, get tested for any food intolerances, sensitivities, or allergies. And if you're not eating too good right now, definitely change up your diet some. And you can do this by adding in more fiber rich foods, collagen boosting foods, and fermented foods. A couple fiber rich foods would be fruits and veggies and then legumes and beans. Collagen boosting foods would be salmon and bone broth. And some really good um, fermented foods would be things like kefir, kimchi, sauerkraut, yogurt, kombucha. Those are all really good things. Dr. Amelia actually shows you how to make fermented foods and bone broth in the BII bridge. It's amazing. And some things that you will want to avoid would be like artificial sweeteners and sugars, sugar, processed food, and like fried fatty greasy foods. I did some research on the best prebiotic foods for you to eat to help with your gut and it's a long list so I'm going to go ahead and read it over here. But it's chicory root, dandelion greens, garlic, onion, leeks, cacao, flax seeds, asparagus, um, unripe green bananas, barley, oats, apples, burdock root, um, wheat bran, and seaweed. So you're going to increase the friendly bacteria by doing so. You're going to help with various digestive problems, which I know a lot of ladies with breast implants and breast implant illness have Digest, digestive problems, boost your immune system, and you wanna eat these foods in their raw form as much as you can. Um, but if you do need to cook them, because just having garlic raw or onions raw or asparagus raw just kind of looks you out, then just lightly steaming them would be best. The second thing I would recommend doing is moving your body in some way, shape or form if you're not already. It's never too late to move your body. So if you're not already exercising or moving your body, definitely do so as soon as you can. It's only going to, in my opinion, help your surgery and help your recovery time. Now, when it comes to moving your body, it doesn't have to be like lifting weights and doing CrossFit or anything like that. But I love lifting weights, but it could also be dancing. It could be riding your bike, going swimming. Um, a brisk walk, yoga, anything like that to just get your body moving. It's good for your joints, it's good for, it's good for your bones, it's good for your heart, for your lungs, for your brain, for your mood, for your sleep. So move your body. If you are bedridden or if you're just really not able to move your body too much, I highly recommend looking into and purchasing a rebounder. So a rebounder is essentially just a very small trampoline and that is amazing for your lymphatic system. Even if you can move your body, I exercise and I use my rebounder. So when it comes to the rebounder, you're just going to do very small pulses like this. You're not gonna like jump up like you were when you were a kid, um, but just get that rebounder because that's gonna help your lymph fluid which essentially is going to help your immune system. Any of those things, any or all of those things would be definitely some things that I would recommend doing as you are waiting for your surgery. Number three is eliminating stress. So oftentimes when we think about the gut, we think about food and supplements and stuff like that, but stress is very harsh on the gut and the immune system. It suppresses the immune system, it whacks out your hormones and it slows digestion. So if you are under a tremendous amount of stress, if somebody's causing you stress 
an environment is causing you stress, a Facebook group is causing you stress, do the best that you can to either completely avoid it or at least reduce your exposure to those things or those people, whatever it may be. You want to reduce that stress load as much as you can before your surgery. Some of my favorite stress reducing or self-care practices include music. Listening to music just puts me in such a good mood, especially when you go driving, right? Going out into nature, getting out of the house, getting off the couch, you know, getting away from the EMFs and the blue lights and all that, and just getting out into nature and getting that fresh air and that sunlight, walking around barefoot so that you can ground to the earth. Taking a bath is one of my favorite things. And if I'm uber stressed out, you will find me soaking in a bath, probably with bentonite clay and lavender essential oil and some bubbles. Um, breathing, which we all need to be doing more of, is just slowing down and breathing. Journaling. So journaling out your fears, your emotions, how you're feeling, all of those things, because when you journal, you're essentially processing what is going on around you, how you're feeling, and it helps to get things out of your head and out of your heart onto that paper. Um, turning off the TV, again, depending on what you watch, the media can be very fear-based and fear and worry and guilt and shame, all those are emotions that actually suppress the immune system too. So if you are gonna watch TV, make sure it's something funny and that just makes you feel good and it's not all gloom and doom. Then like I said, removing yourself from groups or Facebook accounts that are leaving you feeling super stressed out or whatever it may be, diffusing essential oils. So my favorite is either Thieves by Young Living, which is amazing for the immune system, or lavender essential oil, because that's just one of the most calming and relaxing essential oils out there. So those are like two of my staples. And two other things when it comes to just like reducing stress and centering in and grounding is meditating and being very mindful and present with where I am. And also EFT which I will share a link down below in the description to an EFT session that I created for pre-op when you're feeling just worried and scared and you have all these you know, doubts and everything like that. EFT is amazing when it comes to that. So I'll link that down below. Number four is getting good sleep and resting. And research has shown that those who get a lot of sleep have a more diverse microbiome. So if you are stressed and you don't sleep good, maybe you have insomnia, some of my favorite tips when it comes to getting a good night's sleep is making your room as dark as possible, turning your air down to about 67 to 68 degrees, turning off your TV, or your phone, anything with blue light for about an hour or two before you go to bed. Now, if you have to be on your phone or the TV, whatever it may be to kind of fall asleep, I know I like falling asleep with the TV on, I have blue light blocking glasses that help me. So again, just reduce that blue light exposure, but if you can't, wear those blue light blocking um, glasses. Another thing would be is um, red light. So an infrared red light is amazing. It'll help drown out that blue light, which most of us get too much blue light exposure and not enough of that red light exposure. Um, magnesium. So I love, there's a powder called Calm and it's magnesium. And it's been shown that those who are excuse me, a little deficient in magnesium have a harder time sleeping and staying asleep. So if you find that this is you, try to incorporate some more magnesium into your diet or with that powder, it's called Calm. I'll link it below. And the last one would be essential oils, which I kind of talked about last, but diffusing essential oils to help you get to bed. My son loves the lavender as well. So, you know, any, any kind of calming essential oil to have going off in your room. It's better than these air fresheners out there, which are nothing but toxic, and they're made of harsh fragrances that really disrupt our hormones. You do not want those. Just diffuse some essential oils, and by doing so, having a dark room, no um, blue lights, having the air cold, and maybe even sleeping naked, you might have a better night's sleep. So I would love to hear from you if you have a hard time sleeping and you try these. 
let me know. I want to see kind of how it works out for you and if it helped. And the fifth thing that I want to mention, it is something that I did and it worked like a charm, spot on, is visualizing your perfect explant surgery about the four week pre-explant mark. Take that month before your explant and really visualize before you go to bed your perfect explant surgery. So how you want to wake up from the day of your surgery to like how you wake up after your surgery, just visualize that whole thing. And so for instance, like what I did was, I was like, I wake up on the day of my surgery on time. I feel rested and I feel calm. Um, I get to the facility early and my surgeon comes in and he is well rested and well fed and he's in a good mood and I go into my surgery and it's only two and a half to three hours. Everything goes perfect and seamless and everything gets out of me. Um, when I wake up, I feel amazing. I can breathe. Um, I'm in no pain and I'm just happy as can be. So kind of like walk yourself through how you want to feel, the smell, you know, how you want your surgeon to be, how long you want your surgery to be, how you want to feel after your surgery and just go through your perfect explant surgery and visualize that every night, the month leading up to your actual surgery date. The sixth thing that I would recommend is two weeks before your surgery, stopping any medications and supplements that your surgeon recommended that you quit and stop taking. So most of us, you know, you probably got a pre-op package of like, what to do before your surgery, what to stop doing, so on and so forth. So whatever your surgeon recommends, definitely go by his or her recommendations. But typically at that two week pre-explant mark is when you're gonna wanna stop taking your medications. And something that a lot of us women do is we take Arnica and we drink a lot of pineapple juice because those two things help with healing, help with inflammation and bruising around your surgery. So a lot of women who actually take it, they find that they're really not bruising at all post explant. So you're gonna to wanna to stop with those medications and supplements that your surgeon recommends and start incorporating more of the healing and the anti-inflammatory natural supplements like the Arnica and the pineapple. And I will link those below as well. Number seven is actually a blog of mine. So it's the 22 things to do before your explant surgery. So it goes over what to do one week before your surgery, one to three days before your surgery, and if you're traveling. So when you're at like that seven to 10 day pre-explant surgery mark, go ahead and go to the 22 things to do before your explant surgery. I will link that down below. And this will help you just make sure that you got your prescriptions filled and your travel arrangements are made. Everything is covered in here. And the last thing that I recommend doing, this would be about five to seven days before your explant surgery, is downloading and printing out the 18 step explant checklist. And again, this just kind of reiterates what to do um, one week before your surgery, the day of your surgery, and then what you can kind of expect up to six weeks after your surgery. Um, it's all in here. I'll put the link to this down below. And then also for those of you who literally just discovered breast implant illness and you're just considering explanting, you're just literally brand new to all of this, I created a guide for you. So it's called Discovering Breast Implant Illness, What Now? And the 22 things to do before your explant are in here. There's pre-op, there's your consultation questions, um, there's post-op care, and then there's also recommended immune boosting supplements and detox supplements in here. Um, again, with anything that I recommend when it comes to supplements or anything like that, definitely do your own research on to make sure that they don't interact with anything that you're already taking, um, or you could have an allergic reaction, or if they you know, aren't good to take with certain medications, whatever it may be. Anytime anybody, not just me, recommends a supplement or anything like that, always do a lot of research on it for the benefits, the side effects, and any kind of drug interactions. But this guide here, Everything is in one place. So every like your consultation questions, um, the 22 things to do before your surgery, pre-op preparation, post-op care, 
you know, the immune system boosting and the detox supplements, it's all in here in one place. So I would definitely download this, print it out, bring this with you on your explant surgery consultation because it has all the questions in there. And um, I'll put the link down to this guide and the checklist down below. Now, with all of that being said, there is one thing you are not gonna want to do while you're waiting to explant, and that is detox. So if you were to do any kind of detox, then you could potentially pull from your breast implants. You could pull the chemicals and the heavy metals from your breast implants, and they'll just keep circulating throughout your body. In my opinion, there's really no point in doing a detox while you're waiting to explant because you're not really going to get all of the toxins out. They're still gonna be inside of you. So while you're waiting to explant, it is best to reduce your stress, stay as calm as possible, eat as good as possible, um, move your body and really focus on your gut health and your immune system and your emotional health too, of course. And then post explant, you wanna take the first like five weeks post explant and just allow your body to naturally cleanse and heal and detox you. You don't wanna incorporate any kind of supplements that you know help facilitate any kind of detox because it really could just make you feel a little bit worse. So you wanna give your body the first like five weeks to just naturally do its thing. And then at that five week mark is when women typically will start some kind of detox. Now I have a detox program, it's a healing and detox program for post-op. So it's a BII bridge and that's the warrior phase. We also have a pre-op phase to help you prepare and get you as strong as you can be, both physically and emotionally and mentally. And that is the fighter phase. They are both three months long, so we will guide you up to your surgery the last three months, and then immediately after your explant surgery, we, surgery, we have the warrior phase, and that will guide you out of your surgery for the first three months to help you heal and further detox. So you don't want to detox while you're waiting to explant. It's just, in my opinion, a waste of time, a waste of energy, a waste of money. And you could really be focusing on just building up your gut, boosting your immune system, and just taking care of yourself emotionally and mentally. All right, so just to reiterate, so we had focus on your gut health and your immune system through good nutrition, probiotics, prebiotics, moving your body, um, eliminating stress, getting lots of rest and lots of sleep. What else is there? Visualize, um, stop your medications around that two week mark, and then download and print out the 22 things to do before your surgery, the 18 step explant checklist, and discovering breast implant illness, what now, that guide. If you were hoping that I was gonna talk about specific supplements or exercise routines or take you through an EFT session or a meditation in this video, that is what the BII Bridge is for. So Bridge is actually an acronym that stands for Body Image, Root Cause, Immune System, Detox, gut health, and then emotions and exercise. So we cover everything in the BII Bridge. It is mind and body focused. We focus on the physical body and emotional and mental health. So Dr. Amelia's role in the BII Bridge, because she's a chiropractor, she's a detox expert, she focuses on your physical body. So she will recommend the supplements, nutrition, she'll take you through that detox. And then my role and responsibility in the BII Bridge is to help you emotionally and mentally, because it very much so is very important for both phases, whether you are waiting to explant or if you've already explanted and now you're like, am I healing right? Is it normal to feel this way? Like, should that look like that? What if I don't get better? The BII Bridge is there for you. We will walk you through everything step by step in an orderly fashion. We removed all the overwhelm and the information that is inside so many Facebook groups and that is found online. And we just 
zoned it down and put it in a step-by-step -step orderly fashion for you so that you know week by week what to do, when to do it, how to do it, when to stop it, and vice versa on the other side after your ex plan, like when to start doing things, when to stop doing things, and then Amelia will take you through her detox. So if you're looking for customized help, then definitely look into the BII Bridge. I'll put the link for it below. And you can always reach out to me personally if you have any questions or if you just want to know if it can help you or if it's for you, anything like that. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you are waiting to explant, I hope that these things really help you. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and leave a comment down below with anything that you may have tried or if you feel like I maybe missed something and you want to share something, leave it down in the comments below and I and everybody else would love to know. So I will see you on the next video. I feel like my hair is stealing the show today. They know that that's thunder and not my stomach.